Hello, I'm Monsignor David Kelly, the pastor here at St. Joseph Parish in Middletown, Delaware. I thank you for taking the time to view this video concerning the procedures and changes you will need to be aware of when you come to Mass at St. Joseph's Church on Sundays or weekdays as we reopen our church. Living with the COVID-19 restrictions these past three months has not been easy for any of us. I'm sure most of you are tired of hearing about the precautions that we have been instructed to follow to protect ourselves and others. We've even had to learn a new vocabulary that concludes words and phrases such as self-isolation, social distancing, and a family unit. Recently, the governors of Delaware and Maryland have instituted a process in their states to begin return to normal life in a series of stages and steps as the statistics concerning the numbers of new cases of the virus, the number of deaths daily reported, and the number of new hospitalizations, etc., etc., are made known. We have entered phase one of recovery in both states, Delaware and Maryland, and have been given permission to begin reopening our churches under specific regulations. Four key regulations for church we must be very carefully adhered to are, number one, sanitizing our facilities, number two, wearing face masks, three, maintaining social distancing, and four, allowable capacity of attendees. After the governors released their regulations, Bishop Malouli implemented specific diocesan regulations that matched or exceeded the state regulations for all churches in the Diocese of Wilmington. Here at St. Joseph Parish, we have been working with a small committee of persons who oversee the various functions and ministries that are most impacted in our reopening of our churches. We have taken a cautious and careful approach to each of the state and diocesan issued directives so as to ensure your safety and health when you are able to come and worship with us. First, our church facilities will be sanitized after each and every mass service or event that takes place here. In particular, the pews will be sanitized after every single Mass. Second, all persons over two years old will be required to wear a face mask at every service, event, or Mass that takes place here. The requirement is to wear the face mask whenever inside the church, and if unwilling to do so, that person will be asked to leave the building. Third, the walkways outside the church and the aisles and pews within the church have been marked in such a way as to provide guidance for social distancing at six feet. Fourth, locally we have chosen to reopen the church at about half capacity that we are allowed in our particular church. We, we have made this cautious choice since social distancing, when moving large numbers of people into and out of the church and pews, is a new experience for us and for you who will be joining us for Masses. As we and you become more acclimated to social distancing in a crowd, we expect to open more seating sections as allowed by state and diocesan authorities. Bishop Malouli has asked us to remind you with the obligation to attend Mass that he had suspended last March is still in effect for persons of all ages. Although he does not prohibit persons of any age from attending Mass services, he strongly recommends that those 60 years and older to seriously consider not coming and watching and celebrating services from the safety of their own homes especially if they have any underlying conditions that make them more vulnerable to the effects of COVID-19. When we reopen our churches in St. Joseph Parish, we will continue to live stream our Sunday Mass and each of our daily Masses as we have since the public Masses were first suspended in March. Finally, 
You must also consider that the restrooms in St. Joseph Church will not be available for use before, during, or after services due to the difficulties of meeting the sanitizing and social distancing requirements. Let's now turn to the procedures and changes that you will see specifically here when you come for Mass at St. Joseph's. We would ask you to drive directly to the parking lots on the east or west side of the church. Do not discharge any passengers at the plaza in front of the church. Before you leave your car, we ask you to sanitize your hands and put on your face masks. And face masks must be worn by everyone over two years old. Gather your family unit and proceed to the east or west walkway to the church and take your place at the end of the lawn. The walkway will be marked every six feet for social distancing. On Sundays, enter the far right and far left sets of open doors to the vestibule when it is your turn. For daily mass, you will enter through the center open doors. When you enter the doors on Sundays, an usher will be there to ask you for your reservation number, your family name, and the number of persons in your family unit who are with you. On weekdays, reservations are not required, and the usher will only ask you for the number of persons in your family unit. The usher will then check the temperature of each member of your family with a no-contact infrared thermometer. If anyone in the family unit registers a temperature higher than 99.9 .9 degrees, the whole group will be asked to return home. The usher will then direct you, if your temperature is fine, to the line for seating, where you will move forward as a family unit, maintaining social distancing from other groups to the main body of the church. Now, family units will be seated in a specific order to ensure proper social distancing as they enter and leave the church. Therefore, you will not have a choice which side of the church, which specific pew, or which specific seat or seats within the pew will be assigned to you and your family. At the door to the main body of the church, wait for the usher to direct your family to come forward and tell the usher how many persons you have in your group. The usher then will indicate which pew and what seats you and your family are to occupy for the Mass. We would ask that you please wait quietly for the beginning of the Mass and keep conversation to an absolute minimum. Now, during the time that we are celebrating Mass itself, you must keep your masks on at all times. Do not leave your assigned pews or seats within the pew. If you do so, you will be asked to leave the building. The Mass will proceed as usual. You should stand, sit, kneel, and respond to prayers and acclamations as usual. There will be no congregational singing of hymns. The only significant changes to the Mass are that the sign of peace is to be admitted and distribution of communion will not take place after, O oh Lord, I am not worthy to receive you. You will be asked to be seated for the, with the, while the ministers receive communion. We will then all stand for the closing prayer, final blessing, and the dismissal. At that point, you will be asked to be seated for the distribution of, the, of communion and exiting the church. For receiving communion, we ask that you remain in your seats until the usher directs you to the communion line at the back of the church and into the gathering space. As the lines move forward in the church and in the gathering space, Maintain social distancing and keep your mask on. Children should remain at the side of their parent or guardian at all times. 
Now, as you continue on your journey through the vestibule section of the church, you will notice when you come to the line in front, in the front of the line, standing in front of the priest, that there will be three blue boxes marked in tape on the floor. The priest or deacon or Eucharistic minister who will be giving you communion will be facing you off to either the right or the left, depending on which set of doors and which line you are in, you will see a second box. There will also be a third box right in front of you as you come to the head of the line. Individually, each member of your family is going to step forward into that first box in front of the priest, deacon, or minister of communion. You will then be given the host. And this is a good time to kind of maybe go back over how it is that we receive communion in a holy way. To receive communion in the hand, we would ask you to take and lay your hands out flat. Please do not try to cup them or somehow reach out with them. Lay them out in front of you at a distance as flat as you can. And the person giving you communion will then place the host, will say to you first, the body of Christ. You, you respond, Amen. They will then place the host on your hand. When they do place the host on your hand, you then will move from the box that you are in to the empty box at the side of the minister, where you will stop, lift your mask, and place the host in your mouth and consume it. As soon as you have consumed it, you then head out the door and wait for your family outside as they will be following you one by one. Now, we also have an option of receiving on the tongue, but the bishop has asked that we suggest to all of you, out of care and concern and Christian charity for the health and welfare of everybody who has come, to, to the service and is in line to receive communion, that you consider, if you usually receive it on your tongue, that you consider setting that aside for this time period when we have these extraordinary and unusual conditions and receive it in your hand. No one will refuse you communion on the tongue if you choose to continue receiving that way. It is basically the same procedure the minister of communion will hold out the host before you and say the body of Christ. You will, with your mask on, say, Amen. You may then lift your mask up and put your tongue out. Make sure your tongue is beyond your lips so that we do not have to touch our fingers to your lips or to your tongue itself. Another reason that we suggest you don't receive communion on the tongue at this time is that if by chance in giving you the host on your tongue, the minister touches your tongue or lips, he or she will have to leave his, his or her position, go to a table, wash his fingers with soap and water, dry them off, and then sanitize his hands or her hands again, taking up some valuable time for others who are standing in the line. When you have received it on your tongue, you then may put your mask down and immediately come over to the side box and consume the host in your mouth. As I said, you then also would exit out directly out the front door in front of you and there gather with your family unit outside the church and return to your car in the parking lot. We would ask you to not remain in the parking lot to speak with friends. Finally, you then just drive off the church premises and go about your business for the rest of the day. 
In closing, I thank you for taking the time to view this YouTube video to prepare yourself for joining us as we begin to reopen St. Joseph Church for the public celebration of the Mass. All of us on St. Joseph's staff are looking forward to having you back as much as you are looking forward to coming back. This place I'm standing in is my home and your home. In faith, and I will continue to pray for the day when we will be able to gather without special precautions or restrictions, and I hope you will join me in that prayer. I ask for your patience in these early steps of reopening when glitches or delays may occur. I'm sure you will respond, as you so often do, with kindness and Christian charity. I would offer a final reminder that seating will be limited for all Masses. Reservations are required for Sunday Masses, and are available by phone only on Monday through Thursday at 2 to 3 p.m. in the afternoon. The office phone number is available on our website. Reservations are not required for the daily mass on Monday through Friday. We also invite you to join us on our YouTube for live streaming of our weekday and Sunday masses. If you are not able to join us in person, a link to our live streams is also available on our parish website. May the Lord bless and keep you close to his heart. Thank you and goodbye for now.